Hey guys, welcome back. I'm here with Sean of Blue Tech Mobile Detailing. Once again, we're gonna do a little Q&A. I think he's got some questions lined up for me that he'd like to see how I answer them. So I thought I'd bring you guys along because, well, hopefully you guys will gain something from the moment. So this is dedicated, do you want me to say his name? Yeah. To a Daniel, I am going to botch this name up. Uh, Rochalehea. Rochalehea. Rochale. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a difficult, that's a tongue twister for me. Yeah. Whoever, whoever that is. Right. So, want to go for it? Yeah. Question? So, uh, really quick, uh, Daniel, this is a question that came from Instagram. And the question is, um, he was wondering if you can pick my brain a bit. He wants to know more about uh, new techniques on, uh, let me just go ahead and read the question. <laughs> Why don't you do that? Yeah, let's just go do that. So he goes, what up boss? I, comment, I commented on your YouTube video earlier today about glass products. I was wondering if I could pick your brain a bit. I love to learn and I'm always trying to learn new techniques. It's crazy you work with Darren. I love his YouTube channel. So basically you just had a question about glass glass products. Products. He wants to know the question he had originally on my YouTube channel was uh -huh. which glass product do I use to uh, detail cars? Because in my head, that's well, generally I'm gonna lead with this. Yeah. It's one of my rules in life. The better your questions are, right. will directly affect the quality of your life. Yeah. And I found that most people do not know how to ask the right questions. Right. It's not that they don't want the info, mm -hmm. but often we don't know exactly the info that we really need. Therefore, we can't ask the right questions in order to draw out that right info. Right. So when he says glass, that's that's such a generalization. Yeah. It's very ambiguous. Right. I kind of think I know what he means. He's talking about these glass coating type of products that are now uh, produced with waxes or sealants, right. glass coatings. That must be my phone. Yeah. That's my guess is what he's talking about. Right. Um, which I can't really respond to because I haven't used enough of them and there's right. so many versions of them from like true ceramic coatings mm -hmm. because even the ceramic coatings will introduce the word glass into some of their verbiage. Yeah. And so it gets very convoluted, very mixed up and it's hard to know exactly what a guy's talking about. So if he was here with us in the room, I'd say, okay, you need to clarify that question for me. Right. Are you talking about like glass, like how to clean it with glass cleaner, which he probably isn't. Yeah. Or are you talking about glass coatings in the form of like retail type of glass coatings? They're supposed to be, you know, super hy hydrophobic, mm. which means water fearing, which means that it really beads up or sheets off and prevents water spotting and lasts longer and adds all this crazy uh, protection and basically makes your car bulletproof. That's probably yeah. what he's asking about. Right. Which, there's just really good products out there. I, because it's so hard to read through all the hype and marketing, mm -hmm. and I can't verify the chemistry of it, all I can verify is the user experience. Yeah. And moving forward, I can verify, oh, gee, does it still beat up? Right. But the problem with it beating up is that I can take a car that's been freshly decontaminated, mm -hmm do a rub, uh, rubbing alcohol wipe down on it, mm -hmm. so there's literally no grease, oils, waxes, anything on it, yeah. and it's still gonna beat up. Right. So I would look at that and say, oh, the product must still be working, it's still beating up. Mm -hmm. Well, it's gonna beat up slightly different, but it's, it's not this uh, end-all scientific um, um, evidence that says, okay, without a doubt, it's still there. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it, unless you can measure it, yeah. like to go into the scientific world, unless, or the engineering world, unless yeah. you can measure it, it doesn't exist. It's irrelevant. Yeah. I promise you, most of these coatings, they're unmeasurable because they're so thin. Right. So depending upon whom you ask, they'd be like, dude, you can't measure it, it's irrelevant. Yeah. But it doesn't mean it's not working, it just means you might not be able to measure it because it's that thin. Right. So, in you know, and, 20 million words or less, that's how I would answer that question. And I'm sure uh, in the future he can ask more specific questions yeah. and he can answer it a little better. So. And that's what I try to teach you guys is the more precise and specific you can, and, and one of the rules that I try to teach people is take your thoughts, reduce them down to a question, 
but then take that question and reduce it down to a single sentence yeah. and ask someone that question and mm -hmm. see if now it might be someone that has no experience in detailing, but it, but at least see if it makes sense to them at some level. Right. So it, it forces these people to take these floating ideas and to manage them down into something that's more precise that I can say, oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Here's how I would respond to that. Next question would be, is more precise. Okay, so the next question is actually pretty specific. So he says, my biggest concern is how do I become profitable? In one of, of your videos, uh, you talk about the 20 car wash guy, the $20 wash guy, the car wash uh -huh. guy. How do I compete with them? So I already answered him, okay. but obviously let's hear yours. So well, I would start with generalizations, which is value. Um, communication, presentation, what I call my kings. So there's there's trust, there's authority, there's rapport. Yeah. All these things are communicating to the customer something. Mm -hmm. So before you even open your mouth to engage in conversation with them or before yeah. you even pick up your phone to text with them, now obviously that's a little different because they maybe haven't seen you. You yeah. might have a website with your picture on it so they can see that. Well, there you go. I was like, so I'm going to stop there because this is what Darren would do to me. Um, he just said a website. So that's probably one of the things I always tell people. Are, I'm, I'm really new to detailing. But this guy is obviously newer than me. Yeah. So I would suggest I suggest to him that before you actually start your company, be prepared. So like doing a simple website, like mine is overcomplicated because I'm gonna over. I like to complicate things. Um, so is Darren. <laughs> yeah. But um, I told him that if you just, for example, use it for example Wix.com, they have a. And you can go to GoDaddy, even even Google. There's a lot of yeah. basically free templates yes. that you can do a very basic. Right. landing page, right. website. That's what I told him. And to me, that's perfect. Because yes. really at the beginning, that's all you need. Exactly, so I told him that. I said, basically, I told him to use Google actually. Yeah. Uh, Google, if you just type in basic information in there, it creates your website. Yeah. It's pretty simple, and you're automatically on Google, on the internet. So I told him, just do that, create a basic, uh, but we should clarify for that, because yeah. that is an area that is so, okay complex yeah. there's so many moving parts to web the internet right. search engine optimization relevancy uh, page ranking mm -hmm. your site ranking well, there's so many moving parts I know there is but that's why I didn't want to over complicate it by telling too much information no I get that yeah. but what I want to clarify for them is that they need to understand the the benefits of getting a website at the beginning, which yeah. there are a lot of benefits, mm -hmm. but there's a severe amount of drawbacks to it. So the benefits are is that when you're working, and let's say you don't have time, mm -hmm. or you can tell maybe a person is not that interested and you don't want them to absorb more of your time, yeah. and this would be another thing is have a business card right. so you can yeah. hand it out. Yeah. And on that business card, hopefully it will have, well, correct spelling for one, mm -hmm. A lot of guys will actually misspell mobile. They'll yeah. leave the E off of it yeah. because they replicate mobile gas stations yeah. with no E on the end. Okay, interesting. So you have a business card. It's got your information, your phone number, your business name, and hopefully a web address that they can go to. So on that at website, you have your basic information, who you are, uh, contact information, mm -hmm. a contact page perhaps, or you could explain to them, the best way to contact me is to just shoot me a text or to call me, whatever works for you in your world. And then a pricing page. People are always going to want to know pricing, even if they're not cheap asses, as I call them. They're still going to want to know a basic structure of how you price things out. Now, there will be guys that will tell you, I never put my pricing on a website, yeah. but they're not beginners. They don't have to put their pricing on the website. I use it as a strategy. I use it as a way to avoid getting people that I know are t what I call tire kickers also. Yeah, yeah. They're just looky-loos, looking out for the best bargain in town. That's a way I use to filter those people away so they don't even consume my time on the phone. Right. So as a beginner with a website, just know that you will be irrelevant with the search engines. But it can be a useful way if you're going around to like business parks or homes and you're passing your card out and say, hey, uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but here's my card. I do detailing. 
uh, take a look at my website. It's structured out, so there's all this information that will be useful to you, so take a look there. So it's a way for you to give people in a non-confrontational way, because a lot of people, you may catch them off guard, they're not prepared, mm -hmm. and so it's a way that they can reference you after the fact. So there's severe limitations, but if you understand and accept those limitations, it can really benefit you at the beginning. And it also allows you, if you understand Google AdWords, it allows you to pay your way into becoming relevant. So without a landing page called a website, mm -hmm. you can't use Google AdWords because Google mm -hmm. AdWords implants an ad at the top of a search. So let's say I'm a customer that wants my car detailed and so I type in auto detailing Orange County and up populates 8 million results. So if you pay enough at the very top, there'll be three positions that people pay to be shown at the very top of those search results. Mm -hmm. So if you're willing to pay and you have a website, so you can be completely irrelevant with what's called organic search engines or the organic searches, but you can be relevant if you're willing to pay for it and you have a landing website. So those yeah. are my those, 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 constraints. Of course, as, 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 ah, of course, as usual, uh, Darren gives amazing, or gives really good information, uh, because if that wasn't true, then I wouldn't be here. But anyways, uh, that, those, the, ah, that is totally true. Um, uh, one thing I wanted to cover too was, uh, that, uh, when you're building a website, things that I didn't know, and I got this information from Darren and other people, um, is... One of the hardest thing is putting pictures of, of cars you've done because yeah. you don't have like... <laughs> yeah, if you haven't done yeah, any cars. Right. So then I came up with, this is coming from Darren and other people. What I did is I did friends and family's cars mm -hmm. for a very cheap, yeah. like 20, 40 bucks, just enough to pay my overhead, which is my chemicals, not my time. Yeah. And then what I did is I created a, a, a lot of pictures of different vehicles, so doing different things, and I put it on my website. So it looks like I've been doing it for a while. Right, yeah. but but with that said yeah. is, um, if you went to my website, yeah. virtually, I don't think I have any stock, what's called stock photography. Right. It's all original photography. Right. But that's because I had a big, vast library of which to draw from. Yeah. yeah. But at the beginning, like if you look at corporate websites, they don't show pictures of their, right. like literally their office staff working like, oh, here's our secretary. Some of them do, yeah. but most of them don't. So you can use stock photography. Mm -hmm. If you use it in the right way, which that is a whole big can of worms. If you use it in a right way, you can get away with it and still look professional yeah. and actually look very professional because you're not being misrepresentative by saying, oh, this is the exact Ferrari I did, or this is the exact fill in the blank car that I did. Most people with half a clue are gonna be able to tell it's stock photography. And so it, you can use it appropriately at the beginning until you build up a library of your own pictures to use. Yeah, and then the other question he has for me was like, um, how do I come up with prices? And I thought that, that question would be easy to, to answer to or answer. But yeah. I know that when I first started out and over time, my prices keep changing because I'm really new to the industry and I'm still trying to decide how long does it take me to, because uh, uh, okay, time is, is money. Yeah. So when I first started out, it took me seven, seven hours to detail a car. Now I can do it in five hours. Yeah. So, um, of course, now the prices they used to charge before are now making more money. Right. But you have to, you have to like. So you, because yeah. you've become more effective and efficient in your yeah. processes, yeah. is a way of you giving yourself an automatic raise without actually raising your prices. Right. So what I would do is when you first start out. Okay. First of all, you gotta separate yourself. Are you a washer or a detailer? Because. Or you could be both. You could. I mean, for many years I was both. We did weekly no. wash accounts, well, what, but we also did. Right, and that's true. But what I meant was like, okay, like I, okay, I'm a detailer, but I wash the vehicle. I, pre I don't call it a wash, I call it prepping. Right. So I prep your vehicle to get it ready for a detail. Really, I think so, what you're trying to clarify yeah. is in people's heads, they want, they don't understand the difference. 
and they think that well if you are a detailer then you're also a washer yeah. if you're a washer yeah. you're also a detailer so yeah. because there's here in Southern California there's so it's saturated uh, with so many detailers that aren't really detailers, yeah. they're just mobile wash right. guys that have right. these weekly accounts. They show up at the same place every week and they wash anywhere from two to 20 cars at a location and that's all they do. But it says detailing on their van or truck, whatever. And so there's, there's no standardization in this industry and there's no oversight. Mm -hmm. And so anyone can call themselves a detailer. So it's a very uh, ambiguous terminology and it's grounded in so much ignorance because people themselves don't even know the difference. They, they will commingle the terms like, oh, do you do detailing? When in reality, what they're looking for is just someone to come out and wash your car. Right. Or they'll say, oh, so you a mobile, uh, do you, you're a mobile washer, so you must do detailing also. It's like, yeah. well, maybe, right. maybe not. So right. it's, I get your point. It's a valid point. Yeah, and then also another thing too I was gonna say is one of the questions, uh, Daniel had was um, he had a lot of questions. He does. He actually has a lot. I'm not gonna we're gonna go over okay. every single one. But um, one of the other questions he also had was what, which he had earlier was how to separate himself from the guys who charge twenty bucks. Yeah. Well, another thing that has been helping me a lot is uh, make sure you have a uniform, and this is where it comes to play. Now I've had a lot. I've had over two years to think about kind of what I want to do. Um, where the people don't really have two years to really plan things right. out. So for the person who hasn't had two years to plan out, Darren actually offers uh, shirts that you can buy. You still oh, offer those, right? Yeah. Yeah, so he offers shirts that are really cool. And, in, in, and it's actually, in order to like, okay, so instead of overcomplicating things and trying to create a company shirt, which trust me, it is more complicated than it looks. I know. People, yeah. until you do it, you don't yeah. realize yeah. how suddenly compl complex it yeah. can be. Yeah. So really the goal was to help beginners out. Yes. So I made generic branded right. shirts that say right. something like detailer yes. or I know the details yeah. or something like that. Right. So there's a lot of selections. If you want to find it, yes. if you go to like my website, it'll say, uh, in bestautodetailingtips.com, it'll say professionals only, and there'll be resources there. Basically, it'll take you to my Teesprings website. You can also find it on my YouTube channel underneath the description box. Mm. It'll have a clickable link. It'll take you to my store. So there's about like 15 different designs yeah. that I designed up for beginners yeah. so that you can look professional. Right. It says right on it something like detailing, yeah. so people will be like, oh, yes, detailing, professional, uniform, right. so right. they'll connect the dots. So that's how you, it's, it's, it's what I call social proof. You know, you're, you're creating some authority uh, that you are what yeah. you profess to be. Right, so if, if, you, get a, if you get a shirt from Let me from check Darren, my yeah. camera, go on. If you get a shirt from Darren, uh, it's gonna help you uh, with the competition, because the competition does the twenty-hour washes, they come in with like raggedy clothes. Um, they come in raggedy clothes. Uh, they don't have any uniforms. They their vanity is a little dirty, messed up. So the way you separate yourself, I found out is if, you, if your car, first of all, if your car is clean, make sure your car is clean. Because this is one of the things that actually bugs me. Before yeah. I go do a job, I make sure my car is like pretty good condition. Yeah. Because you're going presentation. To presentation. What well, you're yeah. talking about present presentation. One of my kings. Yeah. Communication is right. king. Presentation right. is king. Delivery. Right. So all these things. Your uniform. Make sure it's clean. Um, like I have a dog and he sheds a lot of hair. And Darren actually pointed out to me, which I, I didn't really think about it. And I have a bunch of hair in my shirt. And so now what I do before I leave, I grab a little roller and just roll out the hair. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just like you just gotta think, like. Separate yourself from them like by basically, like, like Darren said, presentation, uh, make sure your car is clean. Oh, products. So make sure you have the best, or, okay, that's right. Rephrase. Make sure you have good products. So you don't want to get like cheapy, like uh, uh, Dawn uh, soap that people Dishwashing, use. Dishwashing, yeah. Dishwashing soap. Hopefully that's obvious to someone. Yeah, and and by the way, <laughs> I know, trust me, I see all kinds of stuff going on out there and I say, how do these people stay in business? Well, yeah. I know how because they, are so cheap and right. people there's plenty of people that are just looking for cheap yeah and good enough is good enough for them right so but you'd be surprised how many people really 
don't care about products. Like I have, I have people that ask, yeah. but usually it's the guy that wants to kind of like posture himself, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, yeah. oh, this is my jungle. You just entered. I'm the king of the jungle. Right. So what kind of products do you use there? Yeah. And it's like, well, I, I use a lot of different products. Most of them, you wouldn't recognize the name because they're not retail products. I yeah. said, I'd be happy to show them to you. It's like, right. oh no, I was just wondering, just wondering if you ever tried out McGuire's or Mother's. Like, yeah, I've tried them out. They make yeah. a lot of good products. Yeah. I don't use uh, any of them, right. but uh, because the products I use are professional products to the industry, mm -hmm. so you would recognize them. That's generally how I answer that question. But that's a good point, and that's another thing too that people have asked me, like, what is it I use? I, when I started out, I used like the stuff that you buy at Pet Boys and right. AutoZone because I didn't know any better. Yeah. But as time has gone on, my inventory of supplies or chemicals has decreased. Yeah. So I'm trying to. Um, You've been able to simplify it yes. because now you know enough to know yes. like what works and what's hype. Right. Like now I don't have to buy hype anymore. Now I can just stick to what works. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Just but, FYI, that yeah. video is at probably like 22 is it really? minutes now already. Oh, okay. Yeah. I know. So uh, let's I cut know, it there. How do you feel, man? Huh? <laughs> I know because uh, I want to do a video. Yeah, Anyhow, yeah. so Daniel, good luck to you. Uh, likely you'll be in communication with Sean yeah. and for the rest of you hopefully you've learned a little something along the way and yeah. we'll see you on the next video